What's the differences? What's the differences between the success and the not so successful? And it's not that they're necessarily doing anything crazy. Like a lot of people think, oh, they must have some crazy workout program. They must have some special macro split. They must be super strict at keeping their carbs low or, and all this. And oh, they're, they're taking all kinds of performance enhancing drugs. And they're, man, they're like, there's, there's something special that the guys who are making progress are doing that I'm not doing. And everyone was looking for the silver bullet, you know, the, the, the secret, right? What, what's the secret sauce that's going to make all this work? And I'm here to tell you, there is no secret sauce. Well, I, there is, but it's, it's not that secret, <laughs> all right? Hey there, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the difference between people who get really good results with their workouts, people who get okay results, and people who get no results at all. And the big difference between all these scenarios. Because this is a conversation that I was having with some of my coaching students with the Muscle After 40 Blueprint. And within that program, we've got some guys who are making amazing progress, right? People who are in there crushing it, seeing progress, and sharing their, their results, and they're, they're really becoming those before and after transformations, what we all aspire to, right? You know, people who are really taking action, getting the results, and inspiring others in the journey. And I love to see that. I mean, that's, that's what makes everything that I do worthwhile. When I see those before and after transformations, and I see people who are not only excited and, and making progress for themselves, and then inspiring their own friends and family, but then when we can share that, and help to inspire other people along the way and really create this win-win situation all around. I mean, that's what inspires me the most and that's what really fuels me when I see that. Then we have people who are somewhat in the middle where they're making some progress, but it's not great progress. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we got people who say, well, I'm working out, I'm eating healthy, I'm doing all the right things, but it's not happening. I'm not seeing the results, what's wrong? Like, you know, do I have bad genetics? Do I have a slow metabolism? Like. Why do I suck? Poor me. Like everybody else is getting results, but I'm doing everything when I'm not seeing the results. And I want to unpack this in, in more detail in this video and share what the guys who are getting results are doing versus the guys who are getting okay, you know, so-so results versus the guys who are getting no results at all. And this is something that I've seen firsthand from working with literally hundreds of people and just being a part of the whole fitness industry for over 30 years. What's the differences? What's the differences between the success and the not so successful? Basically, it's being good enough, but good enough consistently. And this is something that I've preached over and over again. And a lot of people hear it and they kind of understand it intellectually, but they don't understand it internally. And that's the difference. Because this is a common scenario that I see from people who are struggling with their fitness they'll reach out to me and say, you know, I've been eating a clean diet. I haven't had a cheat meal. I haven't drank alcohol. I've been working out every day. I've been doing everything right and I'm not seeing results. And I say, okay, well, first off, congrats on doing everything right. How long have you been doing everything right for? I've been doing everything right for the past two weeks. I haven't had a cheat meal in two weeks. I haven't skipped a workout in two weeks. I've hit my macros and my calories for the past two weeks. I've done... I've been taking my vitamins for the past two weeks. For two weeks, two weeks, I've been doing everything right. I say, okay, well, what have you been doing for the past two years? Well, I didn't go to the gym. I was eating whatever the hell I wanted. I was binge drinking on the weekends and blah, blah, blah. So like you're expecting to undo years of neglect with two weeks of conscious effort. And it ain't gonna happen, <laughs> right? Like, sorry to tell, sorry to say this, it ain't gonna happen. And I always like to turn the tables on this one and say, imagine you gained weight as fast as you expect to lose weight. So imagine if you went two weeks and you neglected your diet and exercise, imagine if you gained weight as fast as you expect to lose it when you do focus on your diet and exercise. You put on 30 pounds, you get high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you're pre-diabetic. I mean, a lot of people be in serious trouble if their health deteriorated as fast when they neglect their diet and exercise as they expect it to improve when they focus on their diet and exercise. So it takes time. It's not like you're gonna just do something today and see results tomorrow. It takes time and it's the cumulative effect over the long term. So when you look at people who you admire in terms of their health and fitness, like just say like fitness influencers, 
movie stars, actors, role models, celebrities, whoever you admire, just look at what they're doing and how long they've been doing it for. Like, have they been dieting and exercising for a couple weeks or a couple months or something like that? Or have they been doing it for years or decades even? Chances are the people you admire and the people who are in really good shape, they've been doing it for at least 10 years or more. Even the young guys. Like you see some of these young people on social media, like uh, YouTubers and Instagram influencers and all this stuff, guys in the fitness industry. Even if they're in their mid-20s, most of them started in their mid-teens. So by the time they're in their mid-20s, they still got a decade of consistent training under their belt. So it's not something that just happened in a few weeks or a few months. It's something that happened over the course of several years. And that's what you need to think of. Think bigger. Not like where do you want to be this week, this month, you know, in three months or 12 weeks or whatever. Where do you want to be this time next year? In three years, five years, 10 years down the road. Like think bigger. Think down that far. And that's when you see someone who's been doing this for 10 years and then you look at them and you're like, oh my God, like what the hell are you doing? Like what special diet are you on? Like what supplements are you taking? What workout split are you following? What's your macros? What's this? What's that? It's not that they're doing anything crazy. It's that they've been good enough, but good enough consistently over the long term. And the results just compound over time versus people who are bad and bad enough consistently. Think of over the course of the year. Like, let's just say you're on track with your eating and nutrition 300 days a year, right? So over 80% of the time, you're working out. 80% uh, of the time, you're on a solid eating plan, right? It's, it's like a balancing act. Are you having more good days or are you having more bad days? And that's going to determine where you go. And, and a lot of times people are, are, who are in the so-so range, you know, making okay progress, they're, they're balancing pretty even. Like, okay, they'll get on a fit kick for a while and they'll have two or three weeks of really good progress. And then they'll fall off the bandwagon for a week or two. And then they'll get back on it again. And then they'll fall off it again. And, you know, they may make a little bit of progress, but they're not consistent enough. They're not good enough, but good enough consistently. And a lot of times what happens in these situations is people fall into the all or nothing trap. Thinking, well, if I can't be 100% perfect, like if I can't have the super strict diet, if I can't be working out six days a week, two hours a day, you know, perfect plan. If it can't be perfect, then screw it. What's the point of doing anything at all? And they fall into this all or nothing trap. Whereas you need to let go of this all or nothing mentality because that's not sustainable. I mean, yeah, you may go through a few phases where you can be all in, but you're not going to be all in for the rest of your life. There's going to be challenges. You're going to get busy. There's going to be stuff pop up that you don't even know about. Like prime example, over the past couple of years, we had this big pandemic thing that nobody ever seen coming and that caused a, you know, an upset for a lot of people. You have to be able to foresee the problems in advance and know that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough and good enough consistently. Something is better than nothing. If I can't eat a perfect meal, then hey, I can try and make the best of, of what's available to me, right? I mean, I can make better food choices. Even if they're not perfect food choices, I can still make better food choices. You know, when it comes to the workouts, if I don't have two hours a day, six days a week, well, maybe I can go for an hour a day. Maybe I can go for a half an hour. Maybe I can go three days a week. Like maybe I can do something versus nothing. And something is better than nothing. And a lot of people have this all or nothing mentality where it's like, well, if I can't be 100%, like if I can't be keto and cardio and weight training and six days a week and blah, 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 if I can't do it all in, then well, screw it, what's the point? I'm not going to do anything at all. And then they end up doing nothing at all. And what kind of results do you get when you do nothing at all? <laughs> you know the results you get when you do nothing at all. You look like a bag of shit. Right? And to kind of put things in perspective, especially for those of you who are in the situation where like, I'm working out, but I'm not seeing the results. Poor me, what am I doing wrong? Think of like, what have you been doing over the last year, over the last three years, even over the last five years? And if somebody else, did the exact same thing that you did over the past five years, do you think they would get different results? Like, like prime example, if I followed your eating plan for the last five years, I followed your exercise routine, I did everything that you did over the past five years, do you think I would somehow get better results than you're getting from based on that? Not based on what you've been doing over the last two to three weeks, but what you've been doing over the past five years. If we were in that situation and you had two people do the exact same thing, do you think one person is going to get better results? Probably not. If, if you've been neglecting your health and fitness for years, don't expect to turn it around in a matter of a few weeks or even a few months. It takes longer than that.
Another common scenario that I hear as well is people get on a whole fitness kick and they're not seeing the results fast enough. And then they're starting to get frustrated because they're brainwashed into thinking that, hey, if I take action today, I should see results tomorrow. And to kind of put things in perspective, if you're a parent and you have kids, look at how fast your kids are growing up. Like from your perspective as a parent looking at the kids, they're growing like weeds. Like it's, it's just crazy to see how fast they're growing. But in their mind, it's never fast enough. They're measuring their height against the wall and making the little pencil mark on the wall and saying, oh, like this is how tall I am. And then they go back tomorrow and they check their height again. They're like, oh, I didn't grow. Like what's wrong with me? And they go back next week. Oh, I didn't grow. What's wrong with me? And they're always impatient. They're always like in a hurry to grow up and it's never happening fast enough. But from the outside perspective, from the parent's perspective, or even from someone who doesn't see them as often, like maybe a grandparent's perspective or, or a relative, the kids are growing like crazy. It's like, holy smokes, like last time I seen you, you were down here and now you're up here. Like what, what the heck's on the go? But when the kid is seeing themselves day to day, it's never happening fast enough. And that's the same situation that a lot of people find themselves in when it comes to their fitness goals. Because you're so emotionally attached to the result and like you, you, you follow a program, like you're on an eating plan and you're following an exercise routine and you're constantly tr tracking your progress day after day after day and it's not happening fast enough. And you say like, hey man, I've been following this program for a whole week and I haven't dropped a pound. Like what's wrong? Oh, this sucks. I got a bad, slow metabolism, bad genetics, you know, whatever. It's almost the same as like my, my kid measured himself and he was three foot two and he measured himself, you know, in two weeks time and he's still three foot two. Oh, maybe he has a ge genetic disorder. Maybe, you know, he has a growth defect. You know, maybe there's something wrong. We should go get him checked out. Like, no, it's not always linear. It's not like you put in a day's work, you see a day's result. Or it's not like you're always just going to see nonstop progress. It sometimes happens in spurts. Like, have you ever heard of growth spurts? Like, it seems like, you know, kids flatline, 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 and all of a sudden they make a jump, right? And then they might flatline, flatline, then make a jump. And then they might, you know, see some steady progress for a little while and then another flatline. Like that's the way progress happens in the real world. It's not always just straight up linear, like a lot of people expect it to be. There's hills and valleys along the way, and we don't need to get hung up on the peaks and the lows and whatever else. We just need to look at the long-term trend. It's almost like watching the stock market, right? I mean, if, if you're watching the stock market prices, I mean, some days they'll spike, some days they'll dip. We don't need to get hung up in the fluctuations from day to day. We just want to look at the long-term trend. And as long as the long-term trend is moving in the right direction, you know you're on the right track. Same thing with your fitness goals. There's going to be fluctuations. Some days you're going to gain weight. Some days you're going to lose weight. Uh, some days you're going to feel stronger. Some days you're going to feel weaker. Like it's going to fluctuate and it's due to numerous things, things that are sometimes outside your control. It could be just energy levels. It could be hormone issues. It could be sleep and stress and other responsibilities that you got going on in your life. Your food and fluid intake. Like if you're retaining water, if you're under stress, you know, if, if you are in a hot environment or a cold environment, you know, how much you're sweating. You know, if, if you get a stomach bug and you end up going to the bathroom too much. I mean, like all these things can have an impact in your weight. And fast fluctuations in weight, if you gain a pound today or you lose a pound tomorrow and up and down, up and down, it's not body fat or actual lean muscle that's changing. It's food and fluid. That's what's changing the rapid changes you see day to day, right? Like if you jump on the scale and, oh my God, my weight's up two pounds. And then, you know, a few days later, oh, it's down a few pounds and it's up a few pounds and it's down a few pounds. That's water weight. It's not body fat. And a lot of people get emotionally attached to their weight and they jump on the scale and if it's down, they feel good. If it's up, they feel bad. And it's, it's just fluid. <laughs> like it's like looking at a glass of water and getting upset if the glass is full or empty. It's water. Like it, it, it is not actual body fat. You need to look at the long-term trend and see like, okay, Watch your weight this month, watch your weight next month, six months from now, a year from now, and look at the trend and where is it moving. And that's where you can kind of get the bigger picture perspective of how things are changing. So that's the whole purpose of this video is to try and get you to see the bigger picture that's out there and not getting hung up in all the little mundane stuff and thinking, well, I've been working out for two weeks and I haven't seen any results yet, or I've been, I haven't had a cheat meal or whatever, and I haven't seen results yet. Like what's wrong with me? It's not that there's anything wrong, it's that there's a lag time between the, the effort you put in and the results you get. And to kind of put this in perspective, even back in my bodybuilding competition days, whenever I would start a contest diet, I never even tracked my progress for the first month. Like the first month, I just, 
kind of went through the motions and I considered it just like a transition month. Focusing on improving my eating habits, focusing on bumping up my cardio, being more consistent with the workouts and just making better choices and habits. And I never even tracked my progress for the first month because I knew it would probably be all over the place. And then I would start tracking the progress, you know, in the second and third month and so on. And then you would start to see it slowly whittling away, slowly whittling away. And then the cool thing about it is the leaner you get, the more it starts to show. For example, if someone's 50 pounds overweight and they lose 10 pounds, you're not going to look any different. You're still going to look the same because you still got 40 pounds of extra fat that's blurring all your definition. But if somebody is 10 pounds overweight and then they lose five, that's going to make a massive difference because now what's happening is they're getting into burning the fat that's in between the muscles, the fat that's blurring the definition, the fat that's going to start to reveal the outline of your abdominals. It's going to start to reveal the separation in your chest. It's going to start, you know, see the V taper to your physique. But when someone's got a lot of extra weight and they lose some weight initially, they don't look any different. It just may be a slightly smaller version of them old cells. And this is where it can be confusing sometimes because if you have somebody uh, who's 10 to 15 pounds overweight and then they lose 10 pounds, they're going to look amazing and then see this big transformation. Whereas someone else who's in the early phase of their transformation, if they lost 10 pounds, they're not going to look any different. And that's where a lot of people get confused thinking, oh, I'm doing everything right, but I'm not seeing the progress. And in those initial phases, you don't look any different. You may get a little smaller. The weight on the scale may drop a little bit, but you still look the same, right? Because you still got a lot of extra body fat to lose. But as you start to whittle that away and you get into the point where the skin is thin and you're starting to reveal the muscle definition underneath, that's when it becomes this like, wow, okay, now I'm seeing the changes happening. And I've seen this with my own coaching students. Like in the initial phases everyone's frustrated because it's not happening fast enough. Like, okay, I'm seeing some progress, but the progress isn't fast enough. But once they've been doing it for a year or two years, then it's like, man, this is crazy. Like, because now the, the changes are happening and they're seeing it and they can appreciate it and it's at a different level. So you have to trust the system and have that long-term vision to stick through it even when you're not seeing the results initially, right? You have to have that vision. And, and it, it's like... There, there's so many analogies I could use for this. It's like if, if you're planting a garden, like you put a seed in the ground and you water it and you nurture it and everything else. It's not like you see the plant initially. It's not like Jack and the Beanstalk where we throw the magic beans out one night and we got a beanstalk the next morning. It doesn't happen that fast. You plant a seed and then the next day, nothing. You know, next week, nothing. Even though you're watering it and you're tending the soil and you're nurturing it and you're making sure it's getting all kinds of sunlight and everything else, Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then eventually, you know, it starts a little sprout. But if you give it time and you trust the process, eventually you're going to have, you know, a plant there. Like, I mean, I could plant an egg corn in the ground, right? You know, a little tiny egg corn and then, you know, nurture it. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. But if you give that several years, eventually we're going to have an oak tree. But you need to have that long-term vision to see that to fruition. Like a lot of people, they get stuck in the weeds and they're like, Oh, I'm putting in all this work and I'm not seeing the results. I'm not seeing the results. It's almost like if I planted a seed and after a few weeks I said, oh, this sucks. I'm going to dig it up and try to plant it somewhere else. I'm going to scrap this program and try another program. I went on keto for three weeks. Didn't work. Well, I'm going to try intermittent fasting. So it's like digging up my seed again and I'm going to replant it somewhere else and try again. And then I, I, I do that for two or three weeks and say, oh, that didn't work. I'm going to dig it up again and replant it somewhere else. Well, if you're always digging it up and replanting it somewhere else, how much is that seed going to grow? It ain't going to grow at all. You're not going to see any results. You have to have that long-term vision and trust the process and let it take root. And that's the problem with a lot of people is they never trust the process and they never stick to a single system long enough to let it take root and actually produce results for them. They're constantly digging it up and starting again versus sticking to one plan, one coach, one system, following it through to fruition and trusting the process. Like that's what you need to do. And that's where so many people go wrong is they're chasing the red shiny ball. Like, oh, I see this advertised. I see that advertised. I want to do this. So oh, that looks good. Oh, that seems faster. I'll do that. And they're bouncing from one program to the next and they're not going anywhere. And, and then they're frustrated and saying, well, I tried everything, right? Why is it not working for me? I tried every diet out there. But the thing is, how long did you try it for, right? You didn't try every diet for five to 10 years because you'd be an old man if you did, right? 
you tried it for a few weeks and it didn't work. And then you tried something else for a few weeks and it didn't work, right? It's just like me planting a seed for a few weeks and then digging it up and planting it somewhere else. It ain't gonna grow if I keep digging it up and replanting it. You have to let it, those roots sink in. You have to trust the process and stick to it long term. Hopefully this is resonating with you and, and giving you some food for thought because the only thing that's going to cause you to fail is if you quit on yourself. That's it. If, if you stick to the plan, you, you take constructive feedback, you, you adjust and modify based on how things are happening, and you refuse to quit. As long as you don't quit on yourself, your results are virtually inevitable. Now, it, there's going to be some challenges, there's going to be ups and downs, and there's going to be obstacles and roadblocks and everything else that you'll have to overcome along the way. But as long as you refuse to quit, you can get around those things and still make it work. You can still make progress. It's only once you decide to quit on yourself and you say, oh, I tried it, it doesn't work, poor me, blah, and you, and you throw in the towel. When you throw in the towel, that's when your results stop. But if you can trust the process and keep moving forward, your results are virtually guaranteed. I have learned more about my nutrition in the last five to six months with you than I have learned in my entire time of trying this out not only you, but from all the guys in the group, I am at my lowest weight and I feel better than I ever have composition wise. I feel better than I ever have. And I think a lot of that really comes down to learning how to eat, you know, looking at food differently and looking how, how to eat and why you're eating at a certain time. And so right. that's where I've learned more than I ever did before. It's, it's a completely different life. I think the the initial uh, reservations I had was I would have to give give up my life that I thought was so great when mm -hmm. in actuality it really wasn't that great. Staying up late and drinking and eating whatever I wanted and and being that heavy and out of shape and everything like I don't know why there was any kind of reservation of like oh no I I I don't want to give this up. I don't want to give this up because looking back this is a completely different life and it's a completely better life. Than this has become my life. I wow. get up because I'm going to work out. I'm an athlete of aging. I'm a master's athlete and we wow. and, and athletes eat well. Athletes train well. Athletes take care of their bodies. It's a no, new identity. I feel like a different person. I look at my, my body and I sometimes I'm like, wow, I look pretty good. And then and I'm really happy. I really appreciate my body now. You know, I always, there's room for improvement. I'm still human, you know, I could be better, but I, I, I look at myself, I'm like, I feel good. I'm, I'm comfortable with me. Yeah, that, that I think really is why your program spoke to me so much is, you know, th this isn't a diet. This is just a lifestyle change. So I think the lowest I actually got to was 172, 173. And I'm slowly gaining lean mass. Staying, the key is I'm, I'm staying lean. I'm not living on chicken broccoli. <laughs> I actually get up and enjoy myself. And I'm just, it's like as time goes on, it just becomes, the process just seems so much easier, so much more enjoyable. It's like, it's not like I'm going out of my way and bending over backwards or, or breaking myself to try and stay in this shape. It's just, I'm enjoying everyday life. I mean, I live a busy life. I'm a drilling engineer. I got two small kids. I mean, it's, life in the fast lane every day right so i i find time i'll get that workout in and i'll get that walk in and i'll i'll just keep eating on track once again i'll keep hammering this point home is this is sustainable and honestly too um just from a like a coaching standpoint you do a really good job of being accessible to the group members that i have access to you and i know i can schedule in my my monthly coaching call and you're going to help me out uh, uh -huh. But I know in between those scheduled calls, if I need something, it's a Facebook messenger message and, and you're going to get back to me as quickly as you can and help me out. If it's something really pressing, you'll even take the time to record a video and send us the video if it needs to be addressed like that. You're there for support. Considering uh, the support side of the program is probably as important, if not more important than the actual weightlifting and nutrition side of things. Uh -huh. From that standpoint, we've got a great you know, program as far as the nutrition and the weightlifting side goes, but we've got a, a coach that's there for you to help you when you need it. So um, that's why I think I've seen so many guys in the program have the success that they have had or they are currently having. We've got the right things there, the right tools, all that they need to succeed, but we've got the support in place.
it was pretty amazing this morning when I jumped on the scale, I had lost a pound because my, my goal is now in the next two weeks is to try to get to the 240s. And I was 251 this morning. And when I entered into my Fitbit, which I got right here, just kind of waiting, all of a sudden it popped up an update. Congratulations on your 100 pound weight loss. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> So you didn't even know it, like the I didn't know, felt. no, because I wasn't tracking, right? Like I said, I'm, I'm this, this is the lightest I've been in over thirty years. So I mean, it's quite an achievement. I I can't remember the last time I seen two fifty. Well, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to continuing on with the journey and and so seeing that progress happen even more. Well, thanks, Lee. It's been a it's been a pleasure, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I really can't. If you're ready to make a lasting change and get in your best shape then book in for a free strategy call with me and we'll discuss a realistic action plan that's right for you. Just head on over to my website at leehayward.com forward slash call.